guys, welcome to my channel. I decided to start a new collection in my red bubble shop and today I'll walk you through the development of this cute well design and how to digitize it and upload it to red bubble. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And now let's get started. Inspiration is everywhere. And in my case, the inspiration to start a new collection came from where I live, northern Germany, not far away from the sea. Considering that there are so many people who have never been to the sea, I feel really grateful to live close by. I thought about all the different aspects I love about the sea and googled some quotes and came across this one. I will always love you. I've read this one probably about a hundred times before, but I still think it's cute every time I read it, so I chose it to start off my collection. In the next step, I thought about how to visualize the quote. I wanted the design to be really simple, but still cute, just like the quote itself. I started brainstorm sketching some cartoony whales, where I kept the aspects that I liked and also changed some things here and there, like the overall shape or the expression to see which design I like best. And in the end, I chose the shape of the one in the top right. To bring the design to life, I decided I wanted to go either for gouache or watercolors. I painted different versions in watercolor and gouache in order to compare them and come to a final decision. In the end, I felt like the flat gouache colors fit the simple cartoony design best and decided against watercolors. However, now that I'm doing the voiceover, I like the watercolor design way more than I liked it when I filmed the video, so maybe I'll upload both versions to Redbubble. Let me know in the comments which one you like more, the gouache whale or the watercolor whale. Next, I'll turn my traditional design into a digital one by scanning it. And when scanning, I make sure to use a high resolution like 1200 dpi. 600 dpi is also okay, but I like to go with a maximum here. It takes a little longer to scan, but especially for bigger products like shower curtains, a high resolution is very important because you don't want your artwork to be pixelated. Now it's time for some editing in Photoshop. I try to keep my editing process very limited because I want the digital design to be close to the original. Therefore, my focus is basically on cleaning the scan up, doing a little color correction if necessary, and choosing the right format for the file. I opened a new layer and imported the scan. First, I want to clean up all the blemishes and get a nice clean white background. And there are basically two techniques that I use. The first one is to just take the repair brush and remove all the blemishes individually. However, this can take some time. Therefore, I'll use another technique. You just add a new layer and then fill it with white. Afterwards, you lower the opacity of the layer until it gets transparent and you can see the whale beneath. Then you just need the eraser tool and remove the white on top of the whale. This step is pretty easy if you have a graphic tablet. If you don't have one, don't worry, you can do it with your mouse or trackpad as well. It's just a little trickier when it comes to the details. Next, I select the whale and the white layer and reduce both to one layer. This step is not necessary, but I like to do it because I tend to get confused with the layers, so I try to keep their number limited. I also wanted to include the actual quote, so I'm using the text tool to add the quote above the top layer. I chose the font Amatic SC, which has a rather playful style that accompanies the cute design very well. When I was happy with the design, I saved the file to my computer. In this step, it's important to consider if you have a design with or without a background layer. If you have a background, you can just save it as a JPEG. However, if you want it to be transparent, you need to save it as a PNG. 
In this case, I chose to save it as a JPEG because it clearly has a white background. The last step, or almost the last step, is the upload to Redbubble, which in my opinion is pretty simple. You just choose your file and the design will be applied to the products. You can then add a title, text, a description, and you can adjust the size of the design on the product or the color you want it to be printed on. In the last step, Redbubble provides you with photos of your design printed on the products that you can use for marketing on Instagram, Twitter, your own website or wherever you want, which you should absolutely do in order to get the most out of your design. If you have any questions about my design process or in general, leave them in the comments down below or contact me on Instagram. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye guys!